And here we go. We've got a bunch of things down, so I'm thinking we got a, a leak. We're just gonna look for something big. All right, so the next day, we got them both going, both out here clicking away. Here's the old H10. You guys wanna see this? It's Car Cal Dave. This is gonna hurt, buddy. Hold on a second. This is gonna hurt a little bit. We are on our most sensitive. We'll even go up to the highest tick tick. We'll get it just below green. Watch this. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, so we've got us a grocery store. That's not working very well. Supposedly it's up to 50 to 60 degrees, which generally means nobody was watching possible alarms. So let's go in here and see what we can find out. All right, so we just climbed up here. And here we go. We've got a bunch of things down, so I'm thinking we got a, a leak. A8 is working, but A7's not. And then Deli Case here's not doing well. I think she told me produce too. So it's all on A. This is A. Compressor's running, compressor's running, compressor's running, compressor's running. Liquid level's nothing. That's a zero. Quite a bit of disturbances there. I just came out of a defrost. We got a hot gas defrost going on. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing juiced up a little bit. I'm gonna have to go grab the long uh, hose because I'm not running that thing up here. Yeah, everything's on. I changed one of the defrost clocks, which these are all working. I doubt they're all going into defrost at the same time as you can see. They're all staggered. Let's get this turned on and calibrated outside here. All right, we're zeroed out. Hopefully it don't go off. Oh. oh boy. So they've got that already uh, blanketed off. Let's do a little coast along here. If it's a real leak, we're gonna maybe picking up something. We're just gonna look for something big. That way we don't dump it in there right away and have problems. Got a rubber seal in there. Works pretty good. Now we'll uh, lead this hose out to the outside because the last thing I want is false alarms. We're just bleeding out the air. Yep, got it. Been trying out these crescents. They've been pretty good. I like the side cutters and the linesmen's have been pretty good. He's got a nice uh, end on them that grips right a hold of a cap. As you can see, you can't hardly get in here with your bare hand. Uh, you'd think they'd put a suction port on the suction manifold, but eh. There's one there, but it's more hassle than it's worth to screw with. There we go. Let her eat. And then we'll dump the other side into another port here. Take your pick. I picked this one because it was so uh, warm. I wanted to make sure it was going to be on for a while. And we'll start dumping in there too. We're gonna go ahead and start scanning the rack, see if we got anything going on here in the rack area. Unfortunately, we got nothing so far. We'll check up here on the uh, up on the roof and see if there's anything up there. I'm in PPM mode, which usually is not the fastest thing in the world. It's not as fast as Super or any of those, so we can go ahead and do more of the Super mode. I've had a lot of leaks on these uni struts. The idiots put them on and didn't put clamps on all of them. Now these ones here look like they all have clamps. But if they don't, they'll rub right through and eat right through it. I mean, you should figure it's going to be a decent sized leak. Something I should be able to pick up pretty easy. I just went ahead and scanned over all this here, here, all the manifolds, briefly underside. It is really windy out here. Uh, fans are not even running. But I went through all the different ports on the side of the condenser, looked through all that. If it was a monster leak, you would probably see some oil up here on the roof. I see nothing out here. Now something that's kind of bothersome is they said that bakery freezer, which is on the B circuit, not the A circuit, or rack, that's the wrong rack. 
that's on this one. So unfortunately, we might be having some problems fast. Like I said, the level on this thing was really pretty high. Yeah, it's way up there. This one here, it's just finally maybe 5%. You see, even with 5%, you still have still have a sight glass that looks like that. All bubblies. We're at 90 pounds pressure. You can see, that's why I like the sight glass. You can see what's coming through. The heat reclaim comes off a heat reclaim valve <clears throat> right here. So it can either go one or the other, and then it'll come back and then finish out on it. But it comes out, goes to that wall. It's gonna go over there to that air handler. All right, so we're inside the air handler. That uh, line comes on through that side. I just scanned all this coil in here. I do not see any oil anywhere in here. So the line's coming right through there. Like I said, if we went through there, it's being pulled that direction, so it'd be pulled away from me. But if we lost 100 pounds, now granted, it was pretty low to begin with. So it ain't probably a full 100 that just happened like today, but it's gonna go that direction. And we should be picking it out in the store. And I'm going to, and I'm still not getting anything yet. Everything's working fine in here. We've already scanned this room and that one over there. These things always leak. I picked up something in here, went to the PPM scale, and of course it's not gonna do it now that I turned the camera on. Well, you're definitely low. Um, I got an itty bitty hit on this one. I didn't get anything big enough to lose 100 pounds or more. I mean, you I got lost 100 at least. It, it's, you think it's on the roof? Or I was on the roof already and I looked at the reclaim and it seems like it's nothing over that either. I don't see no oil anywhere. So, I mean, it's, it's like. everything to go down. Oh, when the whole, basically the whole system's low, so everything gets starved, so whoever's the last on the loop is the first one to get starved out of refrigerant, and then they get warm. But I mean, it wasn't that high when I was here last week either. That's not uncommon. They don't like to put too much in it because if it does leak, then you lose all that extra for no good reason. All that frozen, and right here, this section right there is all on the pink and the pink comes back to B&B. B actually has a pretty good level. This is still warm. So A14, which is what I was originally working on that was low. So 14, it's coming back cold. Still pretty low, not even really moving. So we're gonna go ahead and tie onto another one. Let's get this thing up and going. I gotta do something. So right there is my pet brush. It's one of the, it used to have one of those little push buttons. So I ripped that off. These are pretty well planted in there, but that works really good to get evaporators clean. We just cleaned the evaporator off in the walk-in. The battery went dead. I'll show you that here in a second. These coolers right here, we just cleaned up. Got the backs cleaned up. They're a lot better than what they were. Here's what we got out of it. Off the back of it. All right, so the rotary clocks here connect this plastic thing and I changed this clock the other day and used the one that was with it well it ended up breaking off and that basically is like two fingers hooking onto a flat surface and it rotates them but it's working they're all out of defrost almost all of them you can actually see a refrigerant level there 20% woohoo but Come up to the top, I think is the easiest way to see what's going on. You can see there's a black lever that's gonna snap backwards, and that's going to put it in the defrost. We're at 10% right now. So heat reclaim is technically locked out, which it ain't sending none over that direction anyhow. So we just lost 10% again, dang it. What we're gonna need to do is come back tomorrow, follow these lines across the ceilings. I'm not getting anything in the cases on this rack. I got up and double checked some of that area over there and didn't get nothing on that. Basically, there's not a whole lot more I can do tonight. I'm not staying here all night. It's almost seven o'clock. Pulled one of them out of defrost that was just recently gone into defrost because it was 
You see there's 30%. That's what sucks. You can go from zero to 30 that easy. All right, so the next day, we got them both going, both out here clicking away. Got my power top there for when this H10 Pro goes dead, which will probably be in a half hour. But at least we'll have battery power. Kind of want to see if we get anything as we come through the door. I mean, I've, I've done a million tests on these two, and for the most part, usually Stratus does really good on everything. So what we did, we're shutting down the deli, and V and Zs are pretty much controlled only by the suction stop and mainly the EPR valve. The EPR valve mainly regulates it. There is no liquid solenoid on this thing. We're gonna stop it. That's gonna allow the refrigerant to come through the valve and the TXV come back to here and it's gonna stop. It's gonna build suction pressure and we'll be able to recheck it. I only have two that have hot gas defrost, which is circuits 10 and nine. When I put those in hot gas defrost, that's gonna allow me to get a lot of pressure out there in the evaporator. Heat reclaim lockout happens anytime this goes down to zero. I don't know a lot about the CPC control. These things were installed in uh, 1987, top left one. Uh, so yeah, this thing's just a couple years old. That's the kind of electronics you can actually fix. Big old capacitor still going. You won't see none of today's technology last that long. But you know, we, we were at zero just a little bit ago. We were at 40. Now we're back to 30. It's just all over the place. The H10 is already dead, so we're gonna plug that in. I'm just gonna put that on the side of my belt right there. And like I said, we're gonna see if we can find this stupid leak. I don't got time for this crap. So now that we valved that off, that pressure should be built up pretty good in that um, deli case. All right, we may be into something here. This whole row, I went ahead and shut both suction stops. There's two circuits coming into the air band. Look at that. Now look how that's pegging out in super mode. Didn't have that earlier. Here's the old H10. You guys want to see this? It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. NorCal Dave, this is going to hurt, buddy. Hold on a second. This is going to hurt a little bit. We are on our most sensitive, because that's how I run my detector all the time. We'll even go up to the highest tick tick. We'll get it just below green. Watch this. Same spot. Ooh, wow. We got a little bitty bitty bit. And we are... We've been running nonstop for about an hour now. Ooh, we got a little bitty bit. And look how long it's taken. Yep. Back away from the H10 is the new song, bud. Back away, back away from the H10. See, we get a little something there. But see, if you're crawling along, whoever comes along and goes, oh, I'm gonna go slow. Yeah more like it most people are so impatient they're gonna come along and go oh, da -da. oh look at that oh wow oh hardy cow oh yeah look at that we're getting it down here even yep crazy and what kind of parts per million are we at here let's find out here uh-oh it's 25 it's over this way and h tank couldn't tell me that yeah even at high it's getting it here is medium medium it's not getting it so you need to learn your detector what's it take to make this thing go off okay medium's not getting it only in high all right so we found no other leaks except for right here so let's go get this thing opened up unfortunately I'm having a bad feeling this is gonna be up in the coil you get those fans running there it's not gonna help Yeah, that's with the fan off. Let's go to parts per million. This ain't gonna be good. Oh boy. Look at that. 205. So it's gotta be right there on that second one. See how it's starting to climb up. We're gonna have to pull that panel there, have them remove some orange juice, see if we can get away with not removing the shelf, see if I can fix it in place. If not, I'll have to yank the coil out. We're gonna have to shut down this whole section here. Most of it's pretty resilient. All right, so we got it open. 
coming in, we're on low. We get down here in low, and unfortunately, it's going down off there. It's not going off here. I don't have my superior AccuTrack with me, because I let somebody borrow it. And yeah. It's here in something. I wish I had my gooseneck, because I could get in there tighter. Let's go ahead and get the headphones on so we can hear actually what it sounds like. I'm not getting like I was earlier. Using even the nozzle on the end. I can hear a little bit going through the TXV there. That's about it. So we're gonna have to spray and pray. Picking stuff up in the middle here, but it may be bleeding down. I mean, this stuff is 30 plus years old. Oh yeah, there we go. Now daddy's getting a little happiness. Look at that, 9,900. I was able to pull it out a little bit. I'm going to cut it right here. I'm gonna unscrew it here after I drain this circuit all back to the rack. I'm gonna pull it out and hopefully be able to fix it in place. Cause this thing's probably not real light and I have no one other than maybe some stock boys to help. And honestly, I don't wanna take a chance of them damaging it worse. I'm already a little bit worried about this here coming through that that may end up leaking when we're done. You can tell this here has been push down which put more torque on those fittings so we got a little more of the big blue you know we're gonna need that got the torches i think it was three quarter inch we'll know here in a minute got a flare uh plug should be able to plug that txv off for the pressurization so we got that looks like i got that one there too let's pump this turkey down now what we want to do we want to go in there and we want to shut that circuit eight off here at the liquid valve should use your refrigeration wrench most likely. Not bad. There we are, we're open there, and then when we get down, we'll valve off our sort valve. S-O-R-I-T, sort it, sort it valve. So what we can do, we can come in here, turn off some of these other circuits. So there's our suction dropping. We don't want to get too berserko just yet. We want to get that suction down. I was able to get it down, force it down to about five pounds maybe. Had a force one compressor to run. I'm slowly bringing it back on because I don't want to just hammer it. All these fans on top are obviously all tied directly to power. Contactors only the smallest ones in. So we're gonna bring in one circuit at a time so that pressure starts to drop. Uh, then they hopefully the other compressors will start to kick on here. I did reset it. It was an alarm. Look at them cookies. Pretty nice. There we go. So now we gotta get the nitrogen out and see what we gotta fix. That is beautiful. Warm that up that way it will bend easy. on the end, the very end here, I don't want to gum up my stuff too much. Mainly just want to get it on there and so we can do a pressure test on it. That's all I want. We're not worrying about nitrogen on something like this right here. You, uh, you don't run nitrogen on a rack unless you absolutely are doing a full-blown galore thing. Um, you'll cause more issues if you contaminate several hundreds of pounds of uh, refrigerant with nitrogen than what you will get a little carbon in one of the screens. Um, just because it's bigger don't mean it's okay, but what it does mean is don't be an idiot and create some major issues. Um, 
take it for what it's worth, do what you want. I've I've done 20 pounds of refrigerant uh, contaminated by accident. And that was enough to make me not get too stupid on uh, certain types of jobs. So let's get pressurized and we'll, that way we can see where we're at. There's another, we got multiples. End up rebuilding this whole stupid coil once all said and done. Right there. That one there is definitely the mouth breather of the group. So what I do on that, we'll know that that's one of them. We know that, I know every one of these here are leaking, so we're just gonna do all of them on those. I, it's gonna be a bear to get in there to get those. That one right there is leaking literally right on the end of it. Now granted, they're never gonna have over 100 pounds on this coil. This is not hot gas, but that's the bad boy right there. As far as anything leaking on the backside, I hope it ain't. We're gonna spray it as best we can. They seem like they, you know, did a pretty good job on building these back in the day compared to the junk we got today. My hope is that we can get that heat in there. I don't know. See what's going on on the other side. So. There's that one. You need to be able to get in here and you can't do it very good when you're uh, fighting all this product that's right beside you. Okay, you can see our weak worm up here a little bit. There you go, and it's gonna pull it right down to the bottom. Pull her into the inside a little bit. There we go. Alright, pull her in, pull her in. One, two, and three, and one more here. Okay, let's get this one here and we'll be done, hopefully. Let's get a little bit there. this back because I don't want it to break after I put it back in place. So I'll bend that back and that way if it leaks I'll be able to find out on this on this pressure test. Any of my tools are down in the links below. <clears throat> don't see anything off of that one. That's what I want to know before I waste a bunch of a bunch of nitrogen. I only got two of these tanks in my truck. Make sure now these other ones started leaking because we missed with them. 185 pounds. Didn't mean for it to go that high. I didn't want to create a leak. Uh, it was an accident. But guess what? We are not leaking. Granite lasted that long, but you can see we got in there really good. It helps that my dad was a welder and he taught me the basics of how to apply your heat and how to make a good weld. He didn't do much brazing, but he did build a uh, M1A1 and M1A2 tank. So, you know, I think he might know a little something about making good welds. You won't believe this, but we got another one right there. Itty bitty. Stupid piece of junk. <sighs> what a piece of crap. Tip. That makes so much control. That is so, so nice. Pretty handy there. Got all up inside that crevice. Real pretty light. Yep. Somebody already did a repair on that. Look at that little scab job. Yeah, they already did one. There's another scab job. Ah, look at that. There's been some repairs on this already once. 
you know, all of these could have used it, but I am a little bit afraid of creating more leaks than what I fix. Go ahead and spray this in here, make sure we're okay here. Get it over there when we're in the coil box there. It's gonna be a pain in the hind end. Now I do keep brushes to try to get any carbon out of there while I can, you know. You'll get that out now before we do the other side. So any of the little bits that we got in there, we got it out. Inside the pipe, a little less likely to have happened, but it can. With the nitrogen being purged through it, it uh, it's going to displace the oxygen with it right here by the thing, by the edge. You're going to get um, oxygen going on in there. that vacuum with the suction there, brought it up to maybe 15 pounds of pressure, and then uh, took that valve core tool off because it didn't want to come off. It was too tight. Back to 20%, heat reclaim is back to working. All right, here we go. Well, good thing I double checked it. The detector went off. We're leaking on that flare, not there. Well, to say the least, went ahead and pumped it down. Got that freaking thing cut out, and we're gonna try to make that thing raise back onto it without screwing with the brass that's right beside it. It's uh, not fun. Too dark to get a good picture, but use those again. I think we got it. Yeah, looks like it got it all the way around. Okay, I'm cleaning the face of that flare with a scouring pad here to soften up any edges that might be messed up from the old flare. I can't figure out why it didn't seal. It should have, but whatever. It's starting to freeze on there, unfortunately, but it's 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 enough there that it would, uh, would definitely bubble. Got really lucky. I mean, we only had a stub about that much, and uh, yeah. That's pre-made flare, made it a lot easier. I don't usually like using them, but uh, in a scenario like this, you'd have to swedge it, flare it, get a nut, screw that. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, hopefully you did more than what I did doing it. Leave a comment or a thumb, $20, whatever. So until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.